Hello, everyone, and welcome to the EuroPlanet webinar of May 2019. This is part of the monthly webinar series organized by Nucleo for EuroPlanet on planetary sciences. My name is Nuno Gomes, and I'm an astronomer working at Nucleo. Uh, and I'm currently talking from Porto in the north of Portugal, and I will be your host today. Joining me is Peter Brosch. Peter is an award-winning Czech researcher at the Department of Geodynamics of the Institute of Geophysics of the Czech Academy of Sciences, where he dedicates himself in studying the volcanism across the solar system. He is mainly interested about kilometer-sized cones formed by explosive volcanic activity on the surface of Mars. Hello, Peter. How are you? Hi, thanks. I'm great. I hope I'm correctly saying your name. Is yeah. that Peter yeah. Brosch, right? Peter Brosch, yes. Thank okay. you, sorry for the critics. My okay. language is quite complicated. <laughs> thanks. Okay, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. I'm very glad in having you with us today. So you are going to talk about one of your favorite topics, I suppose, volcanism on Mars. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's true. I would like to make a short introduction to what we know about volcanoes on Mars. Okay, great. So at the end of Peter's presentation, we'll have a Q&A session. If you who are joining us have any question you would like to ask during the presentation, please use the dedicated button on the chat window available in Zoom to write down your questions. After the presentation, we will read your question and Peter will answer it. Okay. Oh, at least I will try. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you will be fine. Okay, I think we are ready to start. Peter, the floor is yours. Super. Thank you very much for the introduction. So today I would like to speak with you about the subject of uh, volcanism on Mars. For those of you who are not really familiar with Mars, so Mars is the fourth planet within the solar system. It's orbiting the sun between the orbits of Earth and Jupiter. And what is important, Mars is a terrestrial planet. So it means that uh, the surface is composed, composed by hard rocks, which are quite similar in composition with the rocks which you can find here on Earth. So Mars is not as strange planet as you can maybe think. Uh, as you can see from this uh, slide, Mars is roughly the half size of the Earth. So it means it has a lower mass and it also has a lower gravity. And the lower gravity is really important because it's uh, able to affect the processes which are operating or which were operating on the surface of Mars. The, rough, the gravity is roughly 38% weaker than the gravity of the Earth. The another important thing which we have to know before we move to volcanism is that Mars has, a, Mars has an atmosphere. And the atmosphere is again weaker than the atmosphere on Earth. Uh, it's probably 180 times weaker, but still it's there and it still, it still has the potential to affect the processes which are operating on the surface of Mars, like a volcanism. How? This is something what I would like to show you later during my presentation. Today, Mars is probably the most explored planet uh, in regard of its surface. We know more about the surface of Mars than we know about the surface of Earth. This is because on Mars we don't have an ocean or oceans. Uh, however, we did not really know too much about the Mars before the space age began. At the end of 19th century, uh, we've been able to observe only that there are some bright and dark spots on the surface of Mars. And uh, once this observation was done when uh, Italian astronomer Giovanni Schiaroparelli uh, actually composed such a nice map in which he connected these bright and dark units together. And when his work was translated from Italian to English, there was actually one tiny mistake which probably changed the, the way how we, well, think, how we are thinking about the Mars. The point here is that the word canale, which he used, was translated as a channels, which in English means that uh, this is something what was built by somebody, not by something. And from this point, 
this really preliminary observations uh, caused a huge interest in public uh, in exploration of Mars because there were these dark and bright features were considered as evidence of extraterrestrial civilization. So shortly after, there was a huge sensation that uh, we would have uh, Martians preparing the invasion to Earth to occupy our planet. Today we know that this is not the true, thanks to the first planetary probe which successfully flyby around the Mars Mariner 4 in 1965. We know that Mars is a little bit different than these imaginations. Uh, this is one of the first image of the surface of Mars which we get. And you can actually see that there is not really too much to see, to say like this. On the next image, you can see the surface. Uh, those who expected that there would be some Martian uh, cities or spaceports or uh, spaceships with, uh, with a huge armada, you would probably be quite uh, sad at the moment. On the other hand, uh, what you can see here, it's a, it's a surface of, uh, of a planet which is heavily cratered. So for a while, we got the feeling that Mars would be as boring as, uh, as, as our moon. It means that it would be the world where the impact cratering would be the main uh, process. Today, we know that this was preliminary results because Mars is much more diverse in geological term of uh, uh, term of view. Uh, thanks to Mariner 9, which was the first planetary probe which was successfully orbiting other planet uh, in the, at the beginning of the 70s of the 20th century, we know that on Mars there is a huge amount of, it, uh, of features formed by various geological phenomena. Uh, unfortunately, or luckily, uh, at the beginning, uh, when the probe arrived uh, on orbit on Mars, it looked for a while that this mission would not really bring a huge amount of results. Because when the probe arrived, there was actually a global dust storm, which was hiding everything from its surface. So we had to wait a couple of uh, weeks before we were actually able to see the surface. This is because, uh, uh, this is because the the dust started to slowly settle when the dust storm was uh, ending. Uh, the first, what we observed from its surface, from, from the surface of Mars, were those huge, really huge mountains, which were rising on some places on on Mars. Uh, probably everybody who knows a little bit about the volcanoes from this image was able to say that on Mars we would have a huge volcanic activity because from the image, it's really quite obvious that this is a volcano. Again, how I'm able to say this, I will show you in a few moments. Uh, today, as I said, Mars is the best explored planet which we have in the solar system. What you can see on this slide, this is a topographic map of Mars in which the elevation is shown uh, in different colors. Uh, the blue is represent representing the lowlands and the yellow and the red is representing the highlights. From the image, you can see that on Mars, we have two different hemisphere. We have a northern hemisphere, which is relatively flat and is composed by lowlands. And on the south, we have a hemisphere, which is heavily cratered and which is composed mainly by highlands. Uh, why I'm showing this image to you is that from this simple image, you can see uh, the complex history of Mars, because we don't have here only the huge impact basins or many impact craters. You can also see here on the left side of the image, you can see here a huge bulge, which is actually uh, probably the largest volcanic province, which we know uh, for, uh, in a solar system. Over here, you can see a huge mountains. There are some cracks. These cracks are actually saying that there was uh, some stress within the crust of Mars. We have over here, or for example, over here, we have some flow-like features, which are saying to us that something was flowing on the surface of Mars, most likely water. Over here, the flat units are saying that there was some deposition. Over here, we have a north north polar cap, so it's saying that there is ice and so on and so on. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that my speech, to, sorry, my speech today, it's only about volcanism. 
one tiny aspect which was able to modify the surface of Mars. But if you would like to know uh, the entire history of the Mars, please try to find more information about the tectonism, water activity, sedimentation, uh, glaciers on Mars and so on, because really the history of the planet is incredibly rich. So Mars is definitely not as boring as our moon. There is one way uh, how you can explore the Mars. I would like to encourage you that once we finish uh, this presentation, you have uh, and you have an option, please just download the Google Earth. You have a possibility to go there and fly around the Mars and explore by yourself, or just go to google.com slash Mars. If I will open for a while, just to show you what can be done there. If you open the Google Earth in, uh, this part, you can go to Mars, you can just switch it, and now you will be flying around the Mars. And you can use the Google Earth in the same way as you are using for Earth. If I will jump to a uh, topographic map and just to download it, you can see that over here, for example, we have those huge flow like features. Over here, we have a Mavales Marineris, which is incredibly large canyon, which is on the surface of Mars. Over here, we have some flat units with a small, uh, many small uh, knobs or mountains, which are actually volcanoes. And over here, we have really large volcanic structures. If I will go to, for example, this image, just to show you the possibility which you have here, you can really, really browse Mars by yourself and investigate what is there and to zoom it and to have a look and so on. If I will now jump back to the presentation and go to the next slide. Over here, we are exactly on the flanks on the mountain, which I just showed to you on Google Earth. Uh, the feature which you just observed, this is the highest volcano in the solar system. It's an Olympus Mount. It's more than 20 kilometers large uh, mountain, which was formed by accumulation of uh, lava. It's probably also the highest mountain within the solar system but uh, and in literature you can find uh, that the height is mainly referred more than 20 kilometers but the number is a little bit changing this is because uh, this is because it was actually historically it was quite hard to say from which uh, part of the mars we have to measure the height of this uh, volcano the olympus mars is roughly three times higher than the mount everest and twice as high as the as the Hawaii. What is really important also is the size of the volcano, not only the height. The size is 600 kilometers. This is really, really incredible. If you have some superpower and you are able to take Olympus Mons and bring it to Europe, it would actually fill the entire France. Such large volcano is it. Uh, okay, I'm still saying this is a volcano and you should ask the question, how I can be so sure that this is a volcano? And this is something what I would like to show you on next two slides. The first is that if you will look in this part into the summit of this uh, mountain over here, you can see that there is a really huge, uh, huge uh, a group of craters. These craters are actually not, a, not a impact craters. They were not f f formed that something was flying around and hitting the surface of Mars. In this case, these are actually uh, calderas or volcanic uh, craters. These craters are formed thanks to the collapse of the rocks inside uh, the mountain. How is it possible? There is a simple illustration which is trying to explain this complex process. Uh, in principle, under the volcano, you have a something which we called in volcanology as a magma chamber. This is a place where the molten rocks are accumulating before they are reaching the surface. Sometimes the magma chamber uh, can be partly emptied or the, better to say the pressure within the chamber can decline because the material is going to the surface and it's causing the volcanic eruption. Once this happened, uh, the, the weight of the rocks which are above this magma chamber can actually collapse and there can, uh, there can make a, such a crater-like uh, structure. Uh, you can see from this satellite image that there is not only one crater, actually there is one 
there over here is the second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, and sixth one. So there are at least six different calderas on the summit area of Olympus Mons. This means that the volcanic activity had to be episodic. Uh, there had to be at least six different, probably much more, but at least six different events during which this uh, summit part of the, of, the, of the feature was formed. The second evidence, or evidence, second line of evidence is that this is the huge volcano you can find everywhere on, on, on the flanks of this mountain. Because everywhere you can find such a flow like of features which have the uh, same shapes or morphology or morphometry uh, as a uh, terrestrial lava, uh, lava flows. And also they show a composition which is, uh, which is saying to us that they are formed by uh, volcanic rocks, by lavas like a basalt. So simply from, uh, from, uh, from uh, images taken in the visible uh, sort of light, you are able to say that this mountain has to be a volcanic in origin. Olympus Mons, as I said, is the largest mountain or largest volcano which is on Mars and also where in the solar system. However, it's not the only huge volcano which is situated on the surface of Mars. In Tarsis, uh, on this small globe you can see over here is Olympus Mons and over here, not far away from it, we have three different and really large volcanic structures. Together they are named as the Tarsis Mons. Uh, they are like, uh, they are named specifically Acreus Pavonis and Arcea Mons. All of them are higher than 10, uh, they are higher than 10 kilometers. So they are still incredibly large if you compare them with the volcanoes which we know from Earth, but because they are situated on the planet where we have Olympus Mons, they are situated like a smaller sisters. Uh, they are formed by the same mechanism as Olympus Mons. All of them are shield volcanoes which were formed uh, during the event when the incredibly low viscosity lava was going from the summit area and spreading to the, to the surrounding. Okay, now you should probably ask the question, how is it possible that we have such a large volcanoes on Mars? And to answer this question, the key is in the movement of the lithosphere. Uh, on Earth, the lithosphere is composed not by one simple uh, sorry, uh, not one, by one single plane, but by several plates which are able to move uh, from one, uh, from uh, each other. However, on Mars, we have probably only one single global plane. So the situation is that if you would have a possibility to observe Martian and terrestrial surface during the time, that uh, on Earth, the continent or the lithospheric plates would be actually moving from one place to other. However, on Mars, the lithosphere would be stuck on one place. And stuck means it would probably be shift, but not uh, too far away. And this has a huge consequences. Why? Because if you have a source of heat which is going through the mantle and which is causing the melting of the rocks within the mantle or within the crust, then you have a magma reaching the surface through the lithosphere or to the crust. And the magma is then able to form a volcano. On Mars, all the material which is going from the mantle to the surface will stay on one place and build a huge volcano. However, on Earth, because the plates are moving, you can see that you will be forming not one single volcano, but instead you would be forming a chain of volcanic uh, structures. And if, again, if you will go and use a Google Earth and you will just go to Pacific Ocean, in this part you can see we have an island of Hawaii and on the bottom of the Pacific uh, Ocean you can find a chain of, uh, uh, of uh, mountains which are rising from a uh, seafloor. If you will date them, you will find that over here you have the youngest volcanic rocks and in this part you have the oldest one. So this is actually nice evidence that the Pacific plate is moving uh, during the time and that the material is not accumulating on one side, but it's spread on much larger array. 
So this is a simple explanation why we don't have such a huge volcanoes on Earth. However, it's also worth it to say that we don't have a, just a large volcanoes on the surface of Mars. Similarly as on Earth, we have many small scale of volcanoes. Actually, smaller volcanoes are, are much more frequent than the large one, because uh, simply it's much easier to uh, extrude or uh, or uh, put uh, less volume of material onto to the surface than to put there a huge amount of material. Uh, this image is just to show you that small scale volcanoes are actually representing a really, uh, uh, really uh, various a group of landforms which can have a different shapes, sizes, and also they can be formed by different mechanism of formation. Some of them, some of them are formed by the effusive volcanism. This is the process during which the magma is just uh, leaving the vent at, as a coherent liquid. Liquid it's uh, flowing uh, to the surrounding, or we can have a features which are associated with explosive volcanism during which the magma is torn apart into the small fragments and deposited to the surrounding. Uh, now I would like to show you uh, the, the, the different uh, types of small scale volcanoes which we know from the surface of Mars and to show and I would like to show you their terrestrial analogs. On this satellite image, uh, you can see that over here we have some flow like feature from uh, which is formed by the flows which were outgoing from this central summit area. Uh, you can see from the scale bar that this volcanic feature it's roughly how much is it like 20 25 kilometers in size if you have an option to measure its height you will find out that the height is only a few dozens up to few hundred of uh, meters so this is actually really really low uh, low volcano uh, it's named as a low shield volcano this is a special type of volcanic landforms which you can find here on earth for example on iceland or in snake river uh, plain in Idaho. Uh, these are volcanoes which are formed by incredibly highly mobile lavas. Actually, the mobility of the lava was probably in the same range as the motor oil. So it means that the material which was extruded from the central crater was able to flow from uh, for dozens of kilometers, really far away from, from its wind. Everywhere in uh, Tarsis, this is the huge volcanic province situated on, uh, on Mars, you can find uh, a flow like features which are, as I said, sharing the same morphological and morphometrical uh, similarities with the terrestrial lava flows. We know from their composition that they are, uh, they are lavas which had, uh, which had a basaltic uh, composition. There are analogs to terrestrial lava flows uh, you can find on Mars some uh, lava flows which are hundreds of kilometers long, which is saying uh, to you that the lava was really mobile. It was really able to flow to incredibly large distances. Probably it has really low content of silica or it was incredibly, uh, incredibly hot. So there are more explanations for it. On few places, and by the word few, I mean two or three places, uh, we are also able to find such a weird domical features, which are a few kilometers in size. They are roughly a few hundred meters and high. So they are actually, their flanks are actually quite steep, around 20, 30 degrees. Uh, there are some evidences of the movement. So there was something flowing. And the interpretation of these features is that these are most likely Martian analogs to lava domes. What are lava domes? Lava domes are volcanoes which are formed by highly viscous lavas. So this is the other end of the mobility of the lava. These are formed by the lava which is not really able to move. So once the, the lava is extruded on, to this, uh, on, sorry, it's extruded on the surface, the material is not really spreading away from the wet. So uh, again, this has some uh, uh, explanation. 
mainly this is because uh, on Earth, this is because there is a high silica content or we have a huge amount of crystals uh, within the melt or, or so on. So I'm just saying this to you that not everything what you can observe on the surface of Mars has to be formed by uh, highly mobile lavas. Sometimes there are features which are formed by highly immobile uh, lavas, like lava domes. In few places also you can see such a layering. This is actually the, the wall of the impact crater over here where is uh, the blue, uh, blue uh, uh, Vort Milazo et al. This is the top of the. Uh, this is the rim of the crater, and over here there's a there's a button of the crater, and on the on the on the wall of the crater there is uh, some exposure of uh, of rocks, and you can see that we have here some uh, some layers, and in one layer you can see that we have such lineated structures. What these are. We believe that these are the Martian evidences of, uh, of columnar jointing. These are uh, the features uh, formed when you have uh, basaltic magma, or sorry, basaltic lava, uh, which is relatively slowly cooling somewhere, like there can be a lava pond or something like this. So because uh, the lava has enough time to lose the heat, there is enough time for crystallization and the crystallization is causing the formation of these incredibly nice uh, features which you can find even here on earth in many places like a giant causeway in northern ireland as one of the nicest examples probably okay these were the evidences of effusive volcanism so i mean the those volcanic structures formed by the ascent of the lava which was then moving as a coherent liquid over the surface. However, we also have evidences of explosive volcanism on Mars. I have to say that 90, probably 80-90% of all volcanic features which we know from the surface of Mars are effusive and only small portion are explosive. So please do not uh, leave my presentation with the impression that we have as many explosive volcanoes on the surface of Mars as we have effusive. This is not the case. The effusive are much more frequent. Probably the best known or the, uh, the, the best known uh, explosive volcanoes are those uh, features associated with the huge impact basin Hellas. On the rim or in the close vicinity of this huge impact basin, we have uh, really old uh, volcanoes which are named as a pottery. They are situated on the uh, on the southern hemisphere. We believe that they are from 3.8 to 3.5 billion years old, and we believe that, that they are for, or they were formed by explosive volcanism. Why? Because if you look on this mountain, which is here, you can see that there is a huge amount of small uh, of small valleys on its flanks. So this is actually saying to you that the material which is forming this volcano or this mountain, it's relatively easy to erode. And if you will think that this volcano is formed by a lava flows, which are mainly composed by basalts or by some other really hard rocks, it would be really hard for water, ice, wind, or some other erosion factors to remove such material. It's much more simple to make such uh, to make such a shape if this mountain is composed by unconsolidated volcanic ash or pyroclastic materials. Make this more simple, uh, volcanic ash or pyroclastic material, these are small fragments, small pieces of volcanic rocks. Uh, probably if you would like to use some really, really simple analog, just think about the bucket full of sand. So it probably uh, has the same consistency for, for, for a while. Okay, then there are uh, some ideas that there can be a super volcanoes on Mars. Uh, firstly, I have to say that the volcanology do not really know or does not really know the term a super volcano. Uh, the super, super volcano is, came from uh, popular journals which are just trying to say that there was really a huge explosion. Uh, within the Arabia Terra, you can discover uh, or you can observe some of 
these atypical craters, uh, which based on a uh, few papers, they do not really, uh, they uh, do not really look like impact craters. Uh, instead, it was proposed that these features may be uh, craters of, uh, of uh, huge volcanic structures in which the explosive activity occurred and a huge amount of pyroclastic material came into the atmosphere. I have to say this is still highly controversial. Uh, this is something where the debate is not really settled. So uh, part of the scientific uh, community is considering them as a normal impact craters, some other as a volcano. So this is just open question at the moment. In some places on Mars, you can find a really large deposits of fine-grained material, which we know based on the uh, reflect, uh, radar reflectivity and spectra, that these are probably uh, volcanic uh, pyroclastic uh, deposits or volcanic ash. So if this material is volcanic in origin, it's actually saying to you that somewhere on the surface of Mars, there has to be a volcano which was able to produce such a fine-grained material. So it's saying you there, there has to be, or there had to be uh, volcanic activity, explosive volcanic activity in the past. As a next, also we have a nice evidences of a volcanic activity from site, uh, from, sorry, directly from the surface. This is the image taken by one of the rover. Over here, you can see a piece of rock which landed on the surface of Mars and during the landing, it was able to penetrate or to bound the layer of material to which it lands. This is again something what we know quite uh, with quite well from Earth. Uh, over here you can see uh, the image of the volcanic uh, crust which landed in fine-grained uh, pyroclastic or uh, uh, volcanic ash material. Uh, the interpretation is that in this case, uh, it can be uh, actually a volcanic bomb which landed in, uh, in uh, fine grained sediment, a volcanic rock. This is, a, uh, in simply words, this is a piece of rock. It can be a lava or just a rock which was close, uh, close to the eruption site, which is erupted from, uh, from the place of explosion into the surrounding. So nothing uh, really complicated here. Uh, in some other areas on the surface of Mars, we have such weird, uh, weird uh, features. You can see here uh, chains of uh, crater-like uh, features associated with some small mountains or hills. We believe that these are the evidences of, uh, of erudal scones or pseudo craters. These are the features which are formed if you have a lava which is flowing over the surface and the surface is enriched by water or water ice. The hot lava is able to, to, uh, to convert the water into the steam. The steam is expanding and fragmenting the, the lava and building such a weird, uh, weird craters. In few places on Mars, again, you can also find such a conical uh, conical features, which we believe that they are the results of phreatomagmatic volcanic eruption. Don't be afraid of the word of phreatomagmatic. It's actually quite simple. Uh, this is the process in which the magma is going through the crust to the surface, and somewhere in the crust it would meet with the subsurface water or water ice or some other volatiles. Again, the heat of the magma is causing the conversion of the water into the steam, the steam is expanding, it's fragmenting the magma and the rocks, and it's building such a conical structure. What is really cool about these features, if they really are a tough rings or tough bones, it means that there has to be a water or water ice under the, under the surface during the time when they were formed. I have to say here that again, this is a little bit controversial because there are some other papers saying that these features, which I just show it over here, that there may be a mud volcano. So the debate is not a settle here. Both interpretations are possible now because we don't have a sufficient amount of data to, to rule one theory over other. And finally, you can find on Mars also such really nice conical features associated with those flow-like features. Uh, there, we believed that uh, we believe that these are actually Martian analogs to scoria cones. Scoria cones are the 
small volcanic landforms, which are the most uh, frequent volcanoes on land on Earth. Actually, 90% of all volcanoes which we have on Earth looks like this. So uh, on Mars, the situation is different. Uh, the scoria cones had uh, been described probably on from five to ten uh, localities on the surface of Mars. So it's actually an open question why we are not able to find uh, more scoria cones on the surface of Mars because we know it from our planet that these are really, really frequent. So I believe now that, uh, so I hope that you, now you will believe me that we have a huge amount of different volcanic structures on the surface of Mars. Some of them are really large, some of them are really small, and they there were formed by uh, lava, uh, by, by uh, explosive volcanism or by effusive volcanism. Okay, I said at the beginning of my talk that we have a different gravity and we have a different atmospheric pressure on the surface of Mars. Unfortunately, I don't have a time here to explain how these two parameters would affect every aspect of volcanism on the surface of Mars. So I decided to just uh, to show you just one case study in which I would illustrate how the different environment can significantly affect the process. So this is a topo uh, this is uh, the DTM. Uh, sorry, this is a slope map uh, which is uh, based on the DTM, which is showing you the scoria cone on Earth on the left and on Mars. We know from Earth that the fresh scoria cones are actually uh, quite steep. Their flanks are ruled by the angle of repose, which is in our case 30 degrees, and every fresh scoria cones looks almost identical. However, on Mars, we observe that this is not the case. The scoria cones on Mars are much gentler in, uh, in regard of the, of the flanks. Uh, the slope is from 5 to 15 degrees mainly, and we were trying to find why, and the answer is because of different environment. If you would take a four centimeter large particle and you would shoot this particle by the speed of 100 meter per second, this particle would maximally fly 100 meters, 100 meter far away from you on Earth. However, the same particle, if you will shoot under the same circumstances and you will just change the gravity and the atmospheric pressure, would fly two kilometers on Mars. In principle, this means two things. Firstly, it would be incredibly hard to play baseball on Mars because your play field would be really large and you would need crazy amount of players. And the second thing is that you will spread the material on much larger area. And if you would like to reach the angle of repose on Earth, you would need just a small, you know, just a, uh, you would have a, just a small area. So the material would be spread only around a uh, really small area. However, on Mars, you would need to spread the material on a on much larger area. Again, make, make, make it more simple. Just take a cap, fill with the sand, and just turn and see that you will make a small hill, and you will see that there are some uh, avalanches of the sand. However, if you would like to make, this, um, make it the same on the table with your computer, the area of the table is much larger, so you would need a much larger amount of sand. And this is just the case. Uh, this is the same. Sorry, this is the same with the with the scoria cones on Earth and on, on on Mars. So this is just to show you how the environment can strongly affect everything. Okay, some summer, uh, summarizing slides. Uh, this is the distribution of volcanoes on Mars as we know it today. You can see that the volcanism it's globally spread on Mars. However, it's localized to few volcanic centers. One is Tarsis over here, the second is Elysium, and then there are uh, some volcanic activity associated with uh, Sirtis uh, region, uh, region uh, Sirtis Major, and also we have uh, volcanoes around the Hellas Basin. However, we know from spectroscopic observation of Mars that the surface of Mars is almost everywhere composed by pyroxene, which is a mineral formed uh, from uh, formed by volcanic activity so it means that almost entire surface of mars was at least somewhere in the past modified by volcanism okay now the question how old are these volcanoes 
to answer this, I have to explain you a little bit how we are actually measuring or establishing the ages of something on other bodies. Unfortunately, we don't have a samples from Mars uh, in, uh, for, for which we would know from which place they exactly are. We have a Martian meteorites, but we don't know from which part of Mars they came from. So we cannot use uh, we cannot use a radiometric dating for the Martian surface at the moment. So we have to use something else, and we are using the statistical method, which is actually saying or using uh, the amount of impact craters over the area to say if something is younger or older, or to say how old is something. In this case, I have two images. On the left, you can see that I have a surface with almost no impact craters. On the right, I have surface with many impact craters so based on this theory the left surface has to be younger than the right uh, surface because it would need much more time to hit the martian surface with so many rocks and to make uh, so many impact craters there is a quite complex uh, mathematical theory how to use amount of impact craters to actually say something about the absolute ages we don't have to time for it so I will just end up with the image that, which is saying that this method it, it is working somehow. Uh, this image is actually summarizing probably a few thousand of hours of work of several PhD students. Uh, on the left, you can see here that we have uh, different volcanic provinces. On the other axis, we have the age in logarithmic, uh, logarithmic scale. And from which you can see that at the beginning, the volcanism was globally spread on the surface of Mars and it's slowly localized to two main volcanic provinces, Elysium and Tarsis. In these provinces, we are able to observe some volcanic structures, which are probably only a few dozens of millions of years old. So now there is an important question. Is Mars still volcanically active or not? To be honest, we don't know. Uh, at the moment, we know that there is no volcanic activity on Mars. We are not able to see any volcano which is erupting something. We are not detect any strong thermal anomaly which would be evidences for, uh, for volcanic activity in not so distant uh, past. And we are not able to see any huge variations in atmosphere which would again we be saying something about the uh, volcanic activity in the past. However, and this is important, uh, we are living in the time that we will probably know the answer for this question quite soon. This is because of the InSight mission. Actually, last year there was a landing of the of the planetary probe, which was able to emplace the seismometer on the surface of Mars. And now we are just listening how the Mars is shaking. And thanks to this shaking, we would be able to say what's inside the Mars, how the interior looks like. This is something that's, uh, again, very simply to say, like, uh, like the ultrasound uh, in the hand of a doctor, which is able to say how your inner organs looks like. So thanks to the seismometer, we would be able to say how the inner uh, part of the uh, Mars look like. And the last slide, uh, I just want to say that the volcanism is really super important process for the evolution of Mars. Why? Because once the magma was reaching the surface, there was probably much more heat. So maybe there was some melting of the glacier or of the ice. Uh, we, can have, uh, we can have liquid water on the surface of Mars for a while. Also during the volcanic eruption, there is a huge release of uh, volcanic gases, which can make the atmosphere much denser. Again, this can help uh, uh, for, for melting of the, of the ice and so on. So actually the volcanism can start the chain reaction, which can strongly affect the evolution of the surface of Mars. And that's it from my side. I would like to be, uh, I would like to be, uh, sorry, I would be very happy if you would remember from my presentation a few main points. One is that we have a volcanoes on the surface of Mars. The next one is that there are, uh, the, 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 the volcanoes which are there, they are showing a large variety in shapes. And this is because they were formed by different uh, mechanisms. 
that the volcanism was active through the entire history of the planet and that the volcanism has the potential to really affect the evolution of the entire planet. And that's from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. And now if you have any question, I would be happy to answer it. Thanks, Peter, for this very interesting talk. There are so many fascinating different volcanic structures on the surface of Mars. We, we could never guess. Yep. And for instance, myself, when I think about uh, Olympus Mons, which is uh, the most famous volcano, uh, let's say, in the solar system, at least so far as we know, I try to imagine a mountain like two and a half times Mount Everest height above sea level and uh, with an area much larger than that of Portugal. I don't know, comparable to the area of Poland or something like that. Uh, but even though that is so hard to grasp, as there we don't have any comparable natural structure like that on our planet, right? It's just a huge uh, Actually, mountain. Actually, there is at least one structure on Earth which can be compared. It's not as high as the Olympus Mons, uh -huh. but it has the same uh, dimension like in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the form of a width of the, of the volcanic structure. It's situated uh, close to Japan on the seafloor of Pacific Ocean. And this is actually a really, really huge volcano. It's not really high, but it's really wet. So at least you can compare the width of the volcanic structure on Earth and on Mars. Okay, fantastic. That's very interesting. Thanks for letting me know. Okay, so we are going now for a Q&A session. Uh, we had some people, uh, at least one uh, attendee uh, from Portugal who was quite active during your presentation. Uh, in fact, uh, his name is José Saraiva, and he also he started by pinpointing the fact that uh, canals are the artificial, are artificial structures and channels would be natural uh, things. I'm not sure if that was clear enough in your slide. Maybe you want to clarify that. Yeah, it's, it's exactly as you said, there are... As far as I'm familiar with this story, there was a problem with the translation that in Italy, the word canale means something what can be built by the natural processes. But in English, the word channel means that it has to be built up by somebody. And this actually caused a huge interest uh, of the public in exploration of Mars, because if there are channels which somebody has to build, there has to be civilization. And this was, you know, a really inspiration for many to write crazy books and to uh, shoot the crazy movies about the Martians waiting for us and try to kill us all. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so I propose to read um, the questions that were asked by our participants and you answer them one by one. By one. Is that okay? Yep. Okay, so uh, from José Soraiva, still from Portugal. Uh, he asks if you have any kind of compositional data for those domes. I'm not sure if you know yeah, what uh, kind of domes he's talking yeah, about. Yeah. I think uh, it would be associated with the domes, uh, the, with uh, these domes which are described blah, 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 over here, because these are probably the only domes which I mentioned in my talk. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have a spectral data for these domes situated within the Terrasireno. Uh, so our paper was based simply on morphology and geological context. Uh, we were trying to require the spectral data. Unfortunately, we didn't get them. So we still do not know what, uh, which type of rocks are forming these features. Okay. Uh, okay, great. So for the second question, José Saraiva also asks, what about Orcos Patera? Uh, and I, I suppose he wants to know a little bit more about uh, the structure. Do you have any information about it? If uh, I'm just trying to find, if I'm not wrong, to be honest, I'm all the time confused. This is Orcus Patra. Okay. I hope so. No. <laughs> to be see how horrible I'm in the <laughs> Martian uh, names. Uh, just. It's a huge planet, so there are so yeah. many structures yeah. to know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I'm mainly focusing about the terraces. Okay, uh, okay, sorry. I will just make sure that... Sure. That I'm speaking, yes. Okay, yes, I will be speaking same. about the same feature. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. As I know, there are two main theories. I'm not really expert in the, uh, about this uh, part of Mars, but mm. there are two main theories. One is saying this is an oblique impact, and the second is saying that this may be associated with the volcanic activity. So I, I'm afraid I'm not really able to provide more information because, as I said, I do not really know more about this. No, that's an open question. It's like science works. So maybe yeah. José Strava can keep in touch with you, and you, if you have... Uh, yeah. If you find any further information regarding this, you can you can talk. Yeah, yeah. I would be more than happy to Google the information. That's... Okay, that's great. Thanks a lot. Um, so, and José Sarava just wrote again, I'm keeping on him, uh, asking, are those CTX images the domes? So he asks if those images are CTX uh, about the domes. In my presentation, there were a CTX but also we have a high-rise images so if you are interested I, I can send you the high-rise numbers and you can have a look you, actually you will be able to see that these domes are composed by a huge boulders which are covered by some mantling mantling units and in this part if you can see my mouse there is something interesting because you can see a layering and some bright material so it our interpretation was that in this part you have a ex firstly you have an explosive activity which was depositing this unit around uh, there was something like a volcanic tuff or some pyroclastic material and later there was the effusion of highly viscous uh, lavas which were partly covering these deposits okay, and this great. is something what you can see on high-rise images okay fantastic uh before moving on to another question Zesarava just left a uh, uh, comment saying that uh, in old days, in his old days as a planetary geologist, uh, he had the idea of studying this area for greater distribution. He is referring to Orcus. So, okay. great. Thanks for sharing your thoughts and your questions, Jose. Um, we have another question we got so far. I think it was already addressed by you, Peter, in your presentation, but it, we can go uh, again uh, uh, for it. It's from Wilson Canelo from Colombia. And he asks, how many tectonic plates are in Mars? Okay, uh, most of the scientific papers which you will find are saying that Mars is composed by one single tectonic plate. This is something what we don't know for sure. We will know it probably thanks to InSight mission better in close future. There are a few papers which are saying that probably there may be a plate tectonism on Mars, but from the citation of these papers, I think, or I mean, this is something which is like highly controversial and the agreement within the scientific community, I mean, it's hard to say this way, but most of the people believe that we have just one single plate because the observations are fitting such interpretation. Okay, yeah, great. Uh, okay, so, so far we haven't had any more question. Uh, I will just load, uh, let you know uh, for you that are attending this webinar that we still have some more minutes. So if you would like... I, I, I see a, one question in a, in a chat about, uh, could you please talk about how volcanism on Mars caused the whole planet to tilt by 2025 degrees? Why did this happen? By exactly, Lucy please Edgen. go for it. I haven't seen it. I was with a question and answer. <laughs> app open please go for it yeah okay uh i will just jump to one slide to help me a little bit for example over this one uh, sorry as always yep this one uh in principle we know that there is a valley there are valley networks on the surface of mars which are spread mainly around the dichotomy boundary because there was something flowing and something most likely water from the southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere simply because it's downhill, yep. If you will check the orientation of these valleys, uh, it seems that originally they were flowing in a little bit different, uh, different uh, 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 direction. And this uh, shift into the direction is explained that the rotation axis of the, of the Mars a little bit shifted. And why? Because there was a formation of Tarsis. In principle, this is a huge bulge, which is like 4,000 of kilometers in size. Uh, the height of the bulge is mainly six kilometers. 
and it's composed by really dense, hard volcanic rocks. And uh, if you will imagine that you have something which is rotating and you would put something super heavy on one side, sooner or later, the entire, you know, rotation would be changed because the heavy material would, you know, force, uh, sorry, uh, the mechanics would try to uh, take the heavy material close to the to the equator. So I hope this is clear. <laughs> if not, please just let me know and I will try to dif uh, explain differently. Um, Lucy asks us, why is that though? Is that due to centripetal force? Oh, wow. Now I'm, oof. I'm not sure if I know what is centripetal force in English, to be honest. Okay, so let's keep it as an open question. And again, 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 I would be more than happy to send a paper. I know exactly where to find the answer. It was okay. one of the slides which I just deleted before the talk to make it shorter. Okay, um, so we have another question from YouTube from Timur Bigashev from Russia. I'm sorry if I'm not saying your name correctly. Uh, could geysers on Mars indicate ongoing volcanic activity? or those could happen even on the dead planet? Uh, that's really, actually a really good question. I mean, from the definition of geysers, uh, you need a heating associated with the volcanism. So the real geysers would mean that there is some volcanic activity or was in not in distant past uh, of the history of Mars. However, we have a geysers on Mars which are ruled by or caused by the expansion of uh, CO2 gases. So these are actually the evidences of cryovolcanism, which is a sort of volcanism. So it depends. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to make a Shalamon answer that, you know, both, uh, yes, oh, sorry, make it more simple. Uh, yes, uh, the geysers can be, but we have a problem that the geyser like features can be formed by the release of different gases. You don't need a water vapor for it, and you don't need a heat tank by magma. So that's that's the problem. Okay, so that's great. We have uh, another one, uh, one more question from Super Bowls, um, who asks: Has volcanism stopped on Mars, or is it still volcanically and seismically active, at least in the local scale? Yeah, this is something what we are actually trying to find the answer by the inside mission. At the moment, simply we don't know. There are no active volcanoes on the surface of Mars at the moment. You cannot see anywhere on Mars that the magma is going onto the surface and you are not able to find any thermal anomalies which would be saying that the magma came to the surface like, sorry, 50 uh, years ago or 100 years ago. However, we know that there are some volcanoes on Mars which had to be formed 5, 10, 15, maybe, uh, maybe 80 million years ago. And in geological speaking terms, 80 million years is like yesterday because you are working with 4 to 5 million, well, billion years uh, history of the planet. So it looks incredibly unlikely that we are starting observing Mars exactly in the time when, when all the volcanic activity stopped. So I would say that we will find by uh, with using the seismometer evidences that there is still enough heat inside the uh, Mars that the volcanism can operate in the future. Mm -hmm. We don't have evidences for this yet, but as I said, it's strongly unlikely that we are observing the Mars exactly in the time when all the volcanism stopped. Yeah, sure. Okay, uh, great. Let me check if there is any other question here from our attendees. Uh, apparently not. And uh, in fact, uh, our time is up. So uh, I think uh, we have to close our webinar here. So thank you so much, Peter, for being a speaker in May Zero Planet webinar. It was really a pleasure having you in our session today. Thank so, you. Thank you very much for the invitation. 
Thank you. Well, I wish you all the best and hopefully we'll meet again for one more exciting talk on volcanoes in the solar system. Okay? Super. Thank you. <laughs> okay, great. As for you, uh, who have joined us today, thank you uh, for attending and participating. Uh, don't forget to follow EuroPlanet on Facebook and Twitter and feel free to ask your planetary questions there. Uh, you can also watch this video and previous ones on the EuroPlanet YouTube channel. You can find more information about this webinar in the Wearable Planet webinars and Galileo teacher training program web pages, whose links will be available in YouTube in the description section of this video. Uh, we'll meet again for our next webinar on the 3rd of June at 14.30 BST or 15.30 Central European Summer Time. This is a bit unusual time, but um, check for the info in our website. Uh, we will have Ashley Davis from NASA's JPL telling us how volcanoes help it transform the surfaces on our planet, of, our, of other earthy planets, and that of the moon. So this is going to be another exciting webinar for volcano lovers. Check our website for more details, okay? If you want to be part of the announce list, you can find all the information in the EuroPlanet website. So stay tuned. Bye-bye, and I hope to see you next time. Nono out.